understand what causes the seasons, let's think of the Earth moving through space as it turns or rotates around an imaginary line called its axis. The north end of the Earth's axis is called the North Pole. And the south end is called the South Pole. If you think of the plane of the Earth's path or orbit and a line upright from it, the Earth's axis is tilted or inclined. It is inclined about 23 and one half degrees away from that line. At any position we might choose along the Earth's path around the sun, the Earth's axis would have the same tilt or inclination. And notice, the North Pole always points in the same direction in space, which is toward the North Star. In order to understand how the tilted axis of the rotating Earth causes the seasons, we have to think first about how the sun's rays strike the Earth and what effect this has. The sun's rays do not strike all parts of the Earth in the same way. Let's take a day when the sun's rays strike the equator directly and think of a person standing there. At noon of that day, the sun's rays seem to him to be coming from directly overhead. But what about the sun's rays that fall on the United States on the same day? Because the Earth is curved, the rays of the sun do not strike the United States directly. We can see this by thinking of a person standing there at noon. The sun's rays are not coming from directly above him. They come at an angle or slant. Places on Earth that get direct rays of sunlight are both brighter and warmer than places where the sun's rays strike the Earth at a slant. We've seen this demonstrated with a beam of light that strikes a surface. When the surface is tilted, the light is spread out more and not so bright. This is the main reason why direct rays provide more heat and light than slanted rays. There's also another reason. For the sun's rays to reach the Earth, they must first pass through the atmosphere. The air, water vapor, and dust of the atmosphere take up or absorb energy from sunlight. Direct rays lose some of their heat and light energy as they pass through the atmosphere. But slatted rays pass through more of the atmosphere and lose more heat and light energy. We can see the longer length of the slanted rays in the atmosphere compared with the shorter length of the more direct rays. Now we'll follow the rotating Earth through one full year. We'll look at the Earth and the tilt of its axis on the first day of each of the four seasons. On the first day of spring, about March 21st, the Earth is approximately here in its orbit around the sun. In the United States, weather is beginning to grow warm after the cold winter. You are looking at the Earth now from the point of view of the sun. Notice that the axis is neither pointing toward nor away from the sun. Now let's look down on the Earth from over the North Pole. We can trace the path the United States follows on the first day of spring as the Earth turns it from daylight into darkness. On the first day of spring, we have 12 hours of daylight. Then we turn into darkness and we have 12 hours of night. At the beginning of spring, night and day are equal all over the world. This day is called the vernal or spring equinox. So, at the beginning of spring, the Earth's axis is tipped neither toward nor away from the sun. But this will not be true as the Earth moves along its orbit. Let's see why. If we look at the position of the Earth on the first day of summer, about June 22nd, we can see that 
Even though the tilt of the axis has remained the same, the northern end of the axis in summer is tipped toward the sun. This day of the year is called the summer solstice. At noon on this day in the United States, we see the sun at its highest point in the sky. Now the sun's rays are more direct than at any other time of the year, and we are getting more heat. We can see another reason why we are getting more heat. If we look down on the earth from above the North Pole on the same day, and once again, follow the path of the United States as the earth rotates. Since the spring equinox, the days have been growing longer and the nights have been growing shorter. So on this first day of summer, we have about 15 hours of daylight and only about nine hours of night. The longer the sun shines on our part of the world, the more heat we get. And so the United States has been warming up. Now our warm season of summer is beginning. So, at the beginning of summer, the northern end of the Earth's axis is tipped toward the sun. But this will change as the Earth continues along its orbit. On the first day of autumn, about September 22nd, the Earth is here in its path around the sun. In this autumn position, the whole world has 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness as it did, you remember, here, the first day of spring. In both positions, the Earth's axis is leaning neither toward nor away from the sun. This day is called the autumnal equinox. In the United States, it is autumn. Cooler weather is coming. Now, as the Earth continues in its orbit, the northern end of its tilted axis points farther and farther away from the sun. On the first day of winter, about December 22nd, the Earth is here in its orbit. The north end of the tilted axis in winter is leaning farther away from the sun than at any other time of the year. This is just the opposite, you remember, of summer, when the north end of the tilted axis leaned farthest toward the sun. This day of the year is called the winter solstice. The sun in winter does not heat our part of the world as much as it does in summer. Let's remember why. The sun's rays that strike the United States in December are very slanted. To us, the sun seems much lower in the sky than in June, when the sun's rays were more direct. Let's again look down on the Earth from above the North Pole and follow the path the United States takes as the Earth rotates on the first day of winter. Now we have about 15 hours of night and only nine hours of daylight. Now cooler weather begins and the United States grows colder through the winter months. But as the Earth moves along its orbit, the north end of its tilted axis points less and less away from the sun. By the time of the spring equinox, about March 21st, spring begins once more, and the Earth's axis is again tipped neither toward nor away from the sun. Day and night are equal, and warm weather is beginning. We have been talking about the seasons in the United States. In parts of the world that are as far south of the equator as we are north of it, the seasons are the same, but reversed. When we are tilted toward the sun in summer, this part of the world is tilted away from the sun, and it is winter there. When we are tilted away from the sun in winter, this part of the world is tilted toward the sun, and it is summer there. Although the seasons here are the reverse of ours, the full cycle is the same. And so we have seen that the four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, are caused by the tilted axis of our rotating Earth 
as it revolves once each year around the sun. Thank you.